Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to Deutz Farm. Our crops are all harvested apart from our sugar beets, which we can't really do anything about, so they're going to just stay like that until we're in a position where we can do something with sugar beets. But everything else is good, everything else has been harvested, and I've done a bit of extra mowing while you were last with us as well. So we just take a quick overview of the map. You can see that you know, this is the area that we sort of mowed last time out. I've uh, also ex you know, finished mowing this area a little bit more extensively. I've done some more mowing down here. I've also mowed this area over here. And then over here as well, we have this kind of weird patch over here, which is almost like a field that's split in two by the dirt path. And there was some grass here, and there was also some wheat as well. That's all been kind of harvested, as you can see. Uh, we're actually going to try and turn this into some kind of actual crop field to give us an extra bit of land for us to work on. Uh, we might do something with this patch of grass here, but I think I'll probably leave that as grass. So we need to basically start prepping our fields now, ready to do our first proper planting. So we have two tractors and we're going to get both of them to work. We're going to do some of the work and we're going to get a worker to come behind us as well. We need to plough our fields and we also need to get them kind of cultivated and ready as well. So we'll be doing the ploughing and the AI will be doing the cultivating for us. So we need to head over here to grab all the relevant bits of equipment. Just going to uh, pick this up. And drop it out in the open for us. Just there. You may notice as well, uh, I've actually changed my bale spikes. Uh, I wasn't particularly comfortable using the uh, standard ones that we got, so I ended up going for the uh, CSZ pack bale spikes with the folding arms, or the folding spikes. Everything else is pretty much standard though. Same arms, same buckets, same forks. It's just a replacement for the bale spikes. Uh, I've also done an extra load or also of TMR for our cows as well. So you can see that our cows are now looking very, very happy. We do actually have a little bit, I think, of TMR left over still in the mixer, which is back in the shed. But everything else is pretty much good to go. The remaining bales have been stacked and put away where we need them. As I say, we have field work that we need to get done. So we're going to jump into that. As we're going to be driving the Sammy Fortis. We're going to get the AI to cultivate behind us in the Deutzfahr. So let's get everything sort of connected and positioned. And then when we've made enough of a head start, we can get the AI to then just start work on the field behind us. In theory, if we had a powerful enough tractor, we could connect both the cultivator and the plough together and do it all in one go but we're going to do it in stages like this I think so uh, let's start off with our furthest away field we're going to start with field 8 this one's a nice easy field for us to work pretty much just uh, straight lines everywhere so if we get a couple of uh, passes done on this we'll then be able to get the cultivator up and running behind us Really looking forward to having some uh, some proper harvesting fun on this map. I think some of the plans that I've got in, in the ways that we can develop this farm uh, should turn out very nicely indeed. Obviously we won't know exactly how that's going to shake out until everything gets done. I haven't gone far forward enough, have I? There we go. We've got another one of these kind of weird partial bits of field here. You can see we've got a field with grass and it's also got spuds planted on it as well. So it's one of those, I think they're spuds. Or are they potentially beets? Let's just double check. I think they're, they're spuds. Uh, let's look at crop type. Yeah, potatoes. Uh, so it's uh, again, it's one of those weird fields like we had over there. Um, on the other side of the farm, we had that kind of grass field with you know, very patchy grass field with bits of wheat showing through. This is the same here. It's a grass field with bits of spuds throwing, going through. Or 
depending on how you look at it, a spud field with bits of grass uh, showing through. It's kind of a strange one. There is the potential to maybe just join it all into one big field, but I don't know. I think we might just leave it as is for now and then maybe turn that back into grass, do something with it later. I don't know. It's kind of a shame those weeds are there because I would like to have taken this field down that way a little bit as well. But uh, we are kind of at the mercy of some of the uh, topography and the flora and fauna on this map. We've had a huge number of mods throughout this week, both going live on the Mod Hub and also just popping up in testing. <coughs> the first of the mod maps to actually get the Sugarcane patch is now with us as well. American Outback was released uh, today with an update, which means we can now get Sugarcane being harvested on that map. Uh, I do know that uh, Mustang Valley and... Um, Huda Ranch are both getting updates very very soon I think they're both already in testing uh, I think as well Golden Days might also be getting a patch but I don't know if that's going to be a sugar cane patch or not, I would imagine it probably is and we know that Hagenstedt is in testing has been for about a week now uh, that I also think is a sugar cane patch uh, and no doubt we'll start to see maybe some of the other maps get uh, updated as well. No word from uh, Bill or uh, Oxygen David as to whether or not their maps are going to get sugarcane updates. Um, I haven't seen either of them post to say that they're working on an update for those maps. I haven't seen either of them pop up in testing. You know, for you know, maps like Sandy Bay and Coldborough and obviously the West Coast. Whether or not those maps will get those patches, I honestly have no idea. If I had to guess, I would say probably not, or at least not right away anyway. But you never know. We may well get patches for those maps. So all I can say is just keep an eye on their pages. Uh, I'm sure if they are working on updates, they will obviously announce it on their separate respective Facebook pages. We've made a nice little head start on this field, I think, so when we get to the end of this pass, we'll fire up the Deutzfar and get him to start cultivating. It'll give us enough of a head start. We will probably be running a little bit faster than the AI. Sorry, a little bit slower than the AI. But the AI might be able to cultivate at a faster speed than we can plough. We can only go at six miles an hour with this Lemkin plough. That's not a, a power issue, that's just the operating speed of this particular plough. I'm not sure what the operating speed of this cultivator is, but I would guess it's probably around 9 to 10 miles an hour instead of 6. If that's the case, we may have to do an entire field first. Let's see how quickly he starts to cultivate. Yeah, he's going at 10 miles an hour. He's going to be way too quick for us. He'll be on us in no time at all. So, uh, if that's the case, we'll get this field finished off, first of all. And then, while we're working on the next field, he can cultivate this field for us. And we'll just have to kind of play field catch-up like that, I think. Otherwise, as I say, he's going to be tripping over the back of us. And I could slow his operating speed down to 6 miles an hour if I wanted to, so that he would match us speed-wise. But then, we'd just be paying more for the same job because workers get paid on a constant rate and uh, the longer it takes for them to do the job the more it's going to cost us so it's not like we can just pay a flat rate for the field it's a rate that's going to be varied depending on how fast he's working it and if we make him slower we're going to have to pay him more to do it which just kind of seems like a an obvious why would you do that kind of option so instead as I say, we'll wait till we finish this field. We'll move on to the next field, and then while we're working that, he can then cultivate this field for us. And that way we won't have to slow him down and pay extra for the privilege. Uh, 
Uh, once our uh, fields have all been sort of worked and planted and are in the growth stages, we will be turning our attention to that little area up by our cornfield. I uh, don't know if you'll be able to see it on the mini-map. Uh, up near field 16, uh, the, the road sort of goes up there between 14 and 16, curves around to, by the side of 15. There's a little clearing area up there, if you remember. I pointed it out on one of the earlier episodes where there's that little hut and a few standard trees in there. We're going to be going in there. We're going to be cutting those trees down and we're going to be planting some apple trees in there. We're going to be making ourselves a small little apple grove or apple orchard in that spot there to give us a nice little bit of uh, steady income just to help us out. Don't forget, this is a hard playthrough farm, so all of our prices are pretty low. Uh, coupled with the fact that we don't exactly have large fields, means that you know, crops are going to be quite low yield regardless of what crop we choose, simply because the fields are very small. So raising money in itself is going to be a bit of a challenge. That's why we're going to be doing the, ma the vast majority of the work on this farm ourselves and just calling in an AI just to help us out when you know, we have a lot of work that needs to be done and just to you know, save a little bit of time, like the ploughing and cultivating. We'll do the ploughing, AI will do the cultivating. And then next time out, you know, AI will do the ploughing and we'll do the cultivating kind of thing. We'll kind of mix it up a little bit. But you know, generally, I think if we get the AI to cultivate, it'll be a little bit cheaper because you know, he'll, he'll be running faster than, than we will. And once we have that orchard in place, you know, it'll cover the cost of any worker fees that we ever incur. It'll also help cover our daily maintenance costs and our animal upkeep costs, because we don't exactly have a lot of cows. So we only have, what, 15 cows? We're, we're getting very little in the way of milk income. I think we're operating, if I remember rightly, at about $2,000 or 2,000 euros a day in, in debt uh, in terms of total costs. We're certainly not making a profit. Uh, at least I don't think we're making a profit. And as we you know, continue to add in and expand our equipment roster, that's only going to, you know, those debts are only going to get higher on the daily, or those costs are only going to get higher, especially as we work at this equipment a lot as well. And the hours are going to go on them, the equipment itself is going to become devalued, the maintenance costs are going to get higher every day. You know, it's going to get to a point where, you know, if we don't do something to at least give us some kind of daily income, then we are going to lose potentially quite a bit of money every day. So putting that apple orchard in nice and early is not just a, um, a way to just give us free money. Because we aren't going to have to kind of work for it. We're going to have to make sure that the trees are kept watered and ideally uh, fed with manure as well to really boost their uh, boost their output and get us the best financial reward off them. You know, it's kind of a preventative measure having those trees in, you know, on the map to stop us from getting into financial hot water. It allows us to actually save up money a lot more easily to upgrade our equipment, buy additional pieces where we need them, and also buy additional land. There isn't much point, you know, just earning just enough to cover our expenses because we'll never be able to progress the farm. So having a small orchard, and it will only be a small orchard, just a handful of trees, will give us a nice little extra extra little boost in our quest to uh, expand our ground the fields luckily aren't too expensive so it shouldn't cost us a small fortune it should be reasonably affordable to add additional fields but even so whatever help we can get financially will be gratefully accepted and received done just got one more pass 
And then that should be everything. Actually, you might possibly take two passes. Let's see if I can get it all done in one. I hug the very edge of this field. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. Let's keep it nice and tidy on this last little piece. Alright, that's looking good. So let's just double check. This field should now look very, very clean. Uh, it does look as though maybe we missed a, a, a small spot just there. Uh, not 100% certain. It may just be picking up on the grass field that's next to us. But I'm just, to be on the safe side, I'm just going to quickly run along here as well. You can see we do have that grass field right next to us just the other side of those reeds and if we're not careful you can see I'm just actually chewing up part of that there as it is uh, we are probably going to have to run the roller over that there just to take a little bit off it before we maybe even reseed it uh, if we're not careful with how we position our cultivator there's a very real risk that he'll just start chewing up everything so uh, need to be very careful that he doesn't just automatically you know trigger onto the next field. Just want to watch him along here. What I may end up doing is just cultivating in a headland around the field. I want to make sure he doesn't go into the crop at the bottom here and that he actually stops. He seems to be detecting that pretty well, but oops, should have not find him on that spot there. What I want to do as well is to make sure he doesn't go into that bit and start cheering up all of that grass. I'm going to get him to cultivate along here as well. So that we have that kind of buffer. So hopefully he'll turn left. Uh, so he won't turn left. Hopefully he'll turn right and work on the field and not be drawn to the grass next to him. There we go. Oops, I just fired him. Damn it. Let's get him back on the field. Get him lined up. And away we go. Right, while he's doing that, we are going to start work on this field here. So, same again. Just want to make sure I'm positioned right up properly. sure we're getting everything on this field and we're not at the moment we're drifting normally when I work an edge of a field I like to comfortably overlap the edge of it just to make sure I am definitely getting the edge this map we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful with that I mean we're okay on this particular field it's just native grass underneath but we have seen a tendency for uh, cloud grass, you know, a workable grass field to be positioned right on the border of one of our crop fields on this map, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. The last thing I want to do is try and link two fields together that can't be linked, you know, very well, because it could just, as I say, trigger the AI just automatically trying to work them at the same time, which will not be helpful to us. This one's really confined right up against the fences as well, which make it quite tricky. You know, we're having to kind of put this headland in, even though I'd rather keep everything going in the same direction. We just don't even have the room to complete a full pass, let alone then back up and turn around again. We just obstacles everywhere. So, really having to be careful on this field. I'm going to put in 
uh, probably another headland at the bottom as well just to give us a little bit more turning room and also just to make sure that we can actually complete a pass there we go so let's get here as well this is definitely a very tight working area it's going to be awkward and fun trying to plant this. And there you can see, even, even one headland is not really enough. We kind of hit the, the fence as we reached our uh, headland there. So we'll have to put a second one in just to make sure that we can actually get everything done. Yeah, the cow is just incessantly moving away. Still a little bit uh, annoyed about that sort of grass patch that's uh, just been blanked out there by placing down that that ramp. It was the quickest, easiest, and most cost-effective way of getting those bales out. I am, of course, referring to the incident that we said we would never <laughs> refer to again. But unfortunately, it was it was the best way to do it. I mean, I could have just spent an absolute fortune leasing telehandlers and. And, uh, and cranes and all sorts trying to just get those bales out. That was by far a much simpler method, but without realising it, it did kind of just damage the field a little bit. I don't think it'll have a lasting impact on this field. I think just replowing it is going to be absolutely fine. But yeah, it's definitely left a nasty sort of scar on our grass field, so to speak where there was grass and now there is nothing but just texture. Maybe I'll uh, plant a couple of uh, random placeable trees in there to just kind of disguise it a little bit. I'll see what we've got, see if there's something I can use to, to cover up the bold spot. Almost like a, an old man with a comb over haircut. <laughs> I'll see if there's anything we can do to hide the fact that there isn't actually anything there. How is our aggro star getting on? He's making quick work of that field, isn't he? Pootling along. He's already done about half the field by the look of it. more than half the field yeah he's really going to catch up to us on this one so he's going to have to sit idly on the side again waiting for us to uh, to get done on this and we may have to do uh, this one ourselves as well I think because of the the way it's shaped and how close it is to the fences uh, and that rock boulder I just think you know this one might be a little bit of a stretch for the AI to cultivate so we'll probably end up having to do this one ourselves as well uh, in which case we'll need to you know get him working somewhere else. Maybe I'll get the AI to actually plough a field for us while we cultivate this one. Just need to find a field that will be sort of AI friendly in that respect. There we go. Now I do want to do some silage on this on this farm we'll do maybe a little bit of grass work but I'd like to do some uh, probably some corn silage using the pull behind uh, forage harvesters now there's an old one that is equipped in the game um, there is also the Massey Ferguson hack that has uh, a forage header or, you know, pull behind forage harvester as well uh, that we won't be using it's massy themed and that'll be kept well away from this farm but there is also um, I mean it's it's more for picking things up you know as the uh, the forage collector you know the Lely Storm uh, has been updated today as well so uh, the P300 I think it is uh, that is not going to help us with harvesting but could help us with actual collecting of grass so we might get one of those to actually pick up grass that we've cut. Uh, what I also might do is, as I say, get that uh, 
corn uh, harvester. I'll show you the ones I mean in here. Uh, it's actually in harvesters, not headers. This, the Pottinger, the Mex 5. I think it would be quite good to use one of those on this farm. You know, it certainly is the right size. Uh, I think we could definitely have a bit of fun with that. Uh, these are the uh, the ones I was telling about, the Lely P300s and the P300 Storm. They've been updated. They should, I think, now have a tow hitch. Um, and then this is the Massey Ferguson one that I was telling about as well. We won't be using that because obviously it's Massey branded and uh, this is uh, definitely not an Agco farm. This is an SDF farm. So we want to kind of keep away from uh, from Agco equipment on this one. So that means no Masseys, no Fence, no Valtras, no Challengers. Oh, he's finished, look. He is done and dusted. We still have half a field to go. I think... Let's uh, let's turn the AI loose on this field. He should be good to finish this one off for us. We'll uh, take over cultivating. And we'll work on the areas that need to be kind of worked on first before anything else can be done. So up by this boulder, for example. So much faster in this thing. So much faster. You know, we, we leased that uh, header to get corn. And if I thought about it, we could have leased the uh, forage header or the forage harvester instead and chaffed that corn for a BGA bunker. But, you know, we do have pigs, so we did kind of need to harvest the corn as food for our pigs. So maybe we made the right choice after all. Seems to be getting on just fine over there, if a little slow. We're bouncing along in our little aggro star. And I'm trying to think if there's any other mods that have gone live recently that we could potentially add into this playlist. Now, obviously, the big silo that's just gone live, which I've installed on our platinum farm, Estancia Lapacho, uh, is definitely not suitable for this particular farm. It's ginormous. I, I think it would take up this entire field easily. It's absolutely massive. A huge monstrosity on a tiny, tiny little farm like this and completely unnecessary as well. So that one's definitely not coming across, but you never know. I mean, there might be something else out there that we could uh, we could perhaps take a look at bringing in. As, as you know, I do like to kind of try and experiment with uh, different mods on different playlists. Now, we've got the Fent 900 favourite uh, Vario. Uh, has gone live now. It's almost identical <laughs> to the 800 favourite that uh, that was released uh, by Smetty a couple of months back. Very, very little di uh, difference in that whatsoever. But we may well stick one of those onto Fent Farm in the new year to go alongside the 800 that's already waiting alongside that farm. It'd be kind of rude not to, really, to, to not use a different... Uh, a different Fent mod, if it's available for Fent Farm. It's 
definitely slower going in cab when you can't see what you're doing. Much, much quicker to go like this. You can see how much faster we're, we're travelling though than our than our plough. Some good old fashioned field work. And I don't normally tend to use the three meter equipment very often. You know, it's kind of always been a case of, well, it's good for a couple of fields when you first start out on a farm, but, you know, depending on the, on the map as well, usually, you know, once you've got that first field or two out of the way, it's completely inappropriate equipment. It just is not up to the task. It would take you way too long to do anything. Uh, there are a couple of fields on American Outback that are, you know, kind of friendly towards three and four meter equipment, but the vast majority of those fields, you're looking you're really at a minimum of six meter working width, ideally sort of nine upwards for most of those fields. A fair few of them are big bud sort of, you know, themed fields as well, so you're looking at 15, uh, 15 plus meter work widths. And a piece of three meter equipment is just going to take you an eternity on a field that is, you know, that just that size. And I wouldn't even dream of using you know, equipment this size on something like Mustang Valley. My God, how long would it take me to do anything on that? When you when you first load that map up, you were given a two meter plow. <laughs> it's just like, why are you giving me the smallest plow in the game <laughs> when you're giving me the three largest fields in the game? It's just insane. Um, or at least, you know, three largest fields a piece, uh, for, for console users. Obviously, PC users have got access to 16 times maps where, you know, the fields on Mustang are small in comparison. But, you know, when you're working a field of 104 hectares, there's no way you're going to be using a three meter piece of equipment. It'll take you not just hours, but possibly a day, like a full 24 hour period to do a field. I do know that harvesting sugar beets on field 20, on field 4 on Mustang Valley um, will take you approximately, assuming you do a nice consistently clean job, a straight harvesting period of around 24 plus hours. It gives you a huge amount of time but even assuming that you know you can get it done in half the time that it provides you, it's still you're still talking 24 hours of constant harvesting. I think it's actually like 26 to 28 hours to harvest sugar beets on field four, which is just well, it, it's it's insane. I mean, the header size is four meters. So that's an extra meter on top of this plow and cultivator in terms of working width. So if it takes you 28 hours, for argument's sake, to harvest, can you imagine how long it would take you to actually cultivate or plow one of those fields with three meter equipment? Or even a two meter plow, for crying out loud. You know, the one that we get given. <laughs> Just ah, insane. Absolutely insane. So, um... Sometimes the equipment that, mod, uh, that map makers give us makes sense. Sometimes it kind of baffles you and, and just beggars belief. Why on earth did we, did we start the map with this piece of equipment? And I get that uh, it's kind of a balancing act between giving you enough equipment to run smoothly and giving you uh, equipment that's going to make starting the map too easy. I suppose it depends partly on if the map maker wants to challenge you or make you know make it very easy for you when you first start out. Plus I think it also depends on that particular map maker's farming style. You know you might get a very very small combine you might get a very big combine. It kind of depends 
on the map maker, I suppose, as to what you're going to start with. Sometimes you go onto a map and you go, oh, I'm just going to get loads of really, really small stuff that we're going to have to sell off straight away. And sometimes you get a little surprise. Like uh, Bullet Bill's selection of equipment for the West Coast, I think is actually pretty fair. You know, we get uh, a decent sized Massey Combine. Uh, we also get two 700 uh, Vario vents. And I'm trying to think what else we get on there as well. There's a, a new Holland T6. Uh, and I think a Voucher as well. Probably an N series, if memory serves me right. But, you know, two tractors that have a, a, a potential 200 horsepower. That's a pretty pretty good start, really, when you consider that, you know, for a long time, whenever we got a new map, it was almost always, let's get either the case combine, the, the very small, old-fashioned case combine, the 1660, um, as a start equipment and we'll get you know uh, the small case 1455s or equivalent sized and power rated tractors you know some maps we actually get some pretty nice starting equipment Mustang Valley again is a decent example we actually start that with a Puma you know which is a great tractor and we start with the uh, I think it's the 7160 I think is the is the model number the, the sort of the middle of the three case combines in game. The smaller of the two new combines, so to speak. We actually start with uh, with a pretty decent sized combine. So yeah, sometimes you can get a nice little surprise. More often than not though, <laughs> you just get equipment that uh, you want to get rid of pretty much straight away and swap everything out. And again, it depends on whether or not you want to run a theme on your farm. I like to run themes because it encourages me to use equipment that I wouldn't normally use. Everyone has their own kind of favourite tractors, and you know, uh, and within a particular brand, they have their favourite models as well. So, you know, uh, I was a huge fan of the T6 in you know from New Holland in Farming Simulator. Uh, six, uh, farm, farming Simulator 15 and I think we also got a T4 if memory serves me right which I very rarely ever use because it was just so small and so ineffective um, on those on those maps really didn't really serve much of a purpose that particular tractor at least you know for me anyway And then uh, this time out, the T4's gone, and we've got a T5 instead. But you know, I still like the T uh, the T6. But more often than not, I tend to find myself using a T7 if I'm going to use a new Holland tractor. In uh, Farming Sim 15, the T8 was great because it came just in one configuration. But it came with the uh, rear track. It was the T8 Smart Tracks was its uh, uh, was the tractor that we had in Farming Sim 15 and uh, I loved using that thing barely touched it in Farming Sim 17 I don't use a T8 very often at all and when I do very rare I tend to put the uh, the track configuration on it I just tend to run it as is so oh we've got a leftover bale I thought I'd collected all the bales I have to come back and grab that later. Uh, so yeah, everyone has their own kind of favourites within within the range, and as I say, my favourite in the New Holland range at the moment in Farming Sim 17 has got to be the T7. I just find it a very nice tractor to use. Um, not quite as uh, versatile as it could be, but it's a good size tractor, good power band, you know, 288 horsepower. Going up to 313, I think, if memory serves me correct. Uh, and obviously, with you know being a PlayStation 4 user um, and a PSN member, we have the Blue Power version for free as well, which is really, really nice. I do like that paint scheme. I know PC users uh, have got that as well, and I think they even got it as a mod uh, as well, as a free mod. Um, I don't think Xbox users can get that. I think that was a PlayStation 
slash PC exclusive, the Blue Power T7. If you're an Xbox farmer, uh, please do let me know if I'm wrong on that, if you do have a, a New Holland T7. But I'm pretty sure that was a PlayStation slash PC exclusive and not made available to Xbox users. Uh, I'm also curious as well, do Xbox users get the Black Massey? I think you guys do. But uh, do let me know as well if you get the uh, the Black Massey uh, with uh, twin wheels. We got that for free as well. Um, although I think that might have just been free for everybody. I'm not sure if that was actually you know, uh, a pre-order bonus or not. I know that the, uh, the Voucher Cow Edition was a pre-order bonus. And uh, as was the Field Viper. Um version of the Challenger that was a pre-order bonus but the other two, the Field Anaconda and the Field Python uh, were not pre-order bonuses or at least not for me uh, on the PS4 you know, they had a, uh, a money value attached to them, I just managed to get them for free because they were included as part of the Season Pass content So yeah, as I say, everyone has their own kind of favourites within within the ranges as well. And it's very easy and very comfortable to just slip into what you what you like using all the time. And you never end up using anything else you know, after a while. You just keep using the same equipment over and over again. Every time you start a new farm or go to a new map, you get rid of all the existing equipment. You get in the equipment that you want to use, and invariably, nine times out of ten, it's going to be the same equipment as you've used before, or you know, a slight variation of the same equipment you, you've used before. I find that running these themes helps me break that habit. You know, it helps me run equipment that I wouldn't normally use. So, I didn't really use the fence tractors that much until I decided to do fence farm. And then I used them all the time, but on that one particular farm. And we did the same with Massey Manor. We had uh, a Massey, Ferg uh, Massey Ferguson themed farm where I just used Massey equipment wherever possible. Uh, I did briefly dally with a run on Sandy Bay with a New Holland set of equipment, but I just didn't really get on with that map. And... Uh, I also was finding it a little overwhelming trying to run three different farms at the same time because I didn't, you know, I wasn't, you know, I was still getting finding my feet, you know, as a as a YouTuber back then, you know, very still new to everything. I was trying to, you know, find the right balancing act between playing the game for me and playing the game for the channel, and at the time it was just too much. I don't tend to play much for myself anymore. Uh, I tend to play more for the channel than anything else. But every now and again, I will start a little private farm. I find by having a couple of different farms and different themed farms as well, it helps keep the game alive and exciting for me as well. Especially with the new mods that keep coming out as well. It's great to uh, jump onto a new map that uh, I actually really enjoy and start playing around with a set of themed equipment and then trying out new mods as they come out. Uh, some of my playlists are more open to mods than others. But uh, yeah, I, I do enjoy running themes like this. As I say, it keeps the game interesting and exciting for me. almost done with this field and we are getting close to running out of time as well. What I'm probably going to do is continue to do some work between episodes and when you come back we'll be kind of getting towards the end of, uh, of our field work. We'll still have some more to do when you come back so I'm not just going to boom, next episode everything's done, all we need to do is plant. You know, there will still be a little bit of field work going on but I'll get a couple more of these fields done between episodes just so it's not going to be three or four episodes worth of cultivating and plowing just to kind of move things along a little bit I do need to kind of bring the uh, aggro star over and get him working on this field in a moment as well oh and there you go there again is another example of the danger of 
having these fields like this. I am toying with the idea of extending this field a little bit, but I'll turn the engine off for a second. We've got this really big slope here, which isn't necessarily too bad, but then it very steeply falls away here, and we've got this very awkward section just here as well. So, I mean, that is not going to be all that friendly to a combine. And I could bring this down partway into this, but then I'm going to have you know, a bit of grass and a bit of land and then a bit of grass like this that's also land. And, you know, it's just going to get very messy if we ever have to hire an AI worker. He's just going to go straight through the invisible barrier between the fields, you know, where... We, we can visually see where we're no longer sort of working that field and it's just grassland but the AI, the AI won't see that the AI will just see its workable ground and just carry on going and it will rip up all of that grass and just keep going until he reaches an obstacle turns around and come all the way back again and turn it into one great big field which we don't want so yeah, um, the only way to make a, a definite physical separation of that would be to do it with a roller. And I don't really want to have large strips <laughs> of, uh, of land where there's nothing there at all, just a green texture and no grass growing of any kind. I do kind of wish at times that we had the ability to plant permanent grass like we did on Farming Sim 15 so that you know we could actually completely separate out the fields but still have grass there rather than just having you know a flat texture with nothing uh, nothing on top of it for the most part I do prefer the new grass system but every now and again I do kind of wish you know uh, it was still like you know farming sim 15 in some respects it did make things a little bit easier when it came to actually separating out fields. I mean, the roller system does work well, but there are just times when say, you don't want flat strips of, of uh, lifeless land around your fields. You want to keep the grass there, uh, and uh, using a roller just prevents that from happening. So, hmm, we'll see. Right, let's bring this around the corner. This is an area I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on. So here you can see this was a grass field and it was also a wheat field at the same time. And it's just like this all the way up, you know, part grass, part wheat. I harvested the grass and then I actually cut some of the, sorry, harvested the wheat and then actually cut some of the grass as well. Bailed up the wheat straw that was left over and bailed up the grass that we collected just to get enough to make a bale or two. Uh, but we're going to turn this into a crop field. Uh, and I may actually recut this just a little bit, maybe extend it a little bit more as well. So uh, I'm going to kind of do this one manually, and I'm probably going to do this one off camera again. We've got a, quite a severe drop down like here, so I've got to be really careful if I do extend this field exactly where I do extend it, because right here we're pretty much right at the edge of falling off a little ditch. And, and most of the way along here, I don't think there really is that much scope to extend it that way we've got the path there as you can see some leftover grass from when I cut it oh, the, excuse my stomach growling at me there um, we've got this path that runs down here uh, and then we've got the path that runs through there as well so this other half is just a kind of a grass meadow this is just going to stay grass that's going to be too much hassle to work as a field especially as it gets really close to the stream there um, but this will turn into a crop field because can, we can get a decent yield off this little bit of ground here. So, um, yeah. While you're away, I'm going to work this field here. I'm going to get rid of all of this bit of grass that's growing through and turn this into just straightforward land that we can plant on. Uh, I'll get a couple of fields cultivated and then when you come back, we'll probably attack the fields on the opposite side of the river. So we'll do look at you know fields 16 and 18 uh, and we'll probably get 22 done off camera as well. Thanks for watching, I am Jim Bob, and I will see you back with another episode of Deutz Farm very soon.